Here's the big question. How are agents like us, who didn't get an opportunity to invest in a franchise early, who are spending time and money to sell homes, building someone else's saleable asset, how do we grow a business but still build wealth, have an extra strategy, and get a piece of the pie that's not dependent on us working more hours and every weekend? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Jay Kinder. My name is Al Stasek. And I'm Michael Reese. We are your hosts, and welcome to the One Big Fire Podcast. What's going on? How's it going out there, everybody? I've got a, a great interview today. I'm super excited. We got Justin Stoddard with us. He is the host of the Think Bigger Real Estate Show, um, best-selling author of the Upstream Model, and a former developer builder that is, is taking over the real estate industry, teaching real estate agents how to build a business scalably through referrals, which uh, we're going to dig into here today because that's not something that's really easy to do. Typically, when I, you know, I've coached agents in the past and, and your business is by referral, it's very, it's not very predictable. And so I think he's got a solution here uh, that helps agents to, to build the business this way. Super excited um, and excited to, to get this opportunity to have a conversation. Justin, how are you doing today, bud? I love it, man. Great, great intro. Very kind of you to say all those nice things. And uh, yeah, great pleasure to be here on the show. I've been uh, really uh, admiring what you've built, the impact that you've had on the industry for years now. So it's, it's a Appreciate great honor that. to be on the show with you. Absolutely, man. So tell me about that. I mean, I, I'm I'm a huge fan of. I mean, I think everybody wants to get more referrals. Um, yeah. You know, talk. Tell me a little bit about Upstream, how you came about that, and and um, really kind of your your journey here as you've been in real estate. Yeah, you bet. Um, you know, I I would venture to say that everybody out there prefers warm referrals over cold leads. I haven't met anybody that that will argue that. Right. The no. challenge is we just don't have enough of them. Right. Our goals are big, and our warm referrals turn off about here. Right. right. And it's like, well, how do I fill that gap? I can either, well, I can settle and have less goals. And for people like you and I, that is not an option. Right. And the people that are listening to this, not an option. Or the other alternative is, well, I guess I got to close it with, with, you know, with like some other like cold lead source. And that's not the end of the world, but there's certain people out there that are, that are highly relational that would, if given the option to build a business that scales, that is not contingent upon the traditional methods of building a referral based business, they'd probably be kind of interested at least in hearing it. And, and right. uh, that's, that's what the upstream model does. I'll, I'll kind of get into that here in a sec, but how I uncovered it is uh, I was a high end home builder working for um, a general contractor and uh, he, he um, like the two of us are building homes. He, he was magnificent at bringing clients in the door. Uh, absolutely. Just fantastic. In fact, he made it look easy and I was running the projects. We were building at one time about 15 luxury custom homes, and I realized I, I have aspirations ever since growing up in a very entrepreneurial family since day one to own my own business. Like I knew that just that was the path for me. And uh, so I approached him and said, look, Ryan, I know your passion is really moving to be land development now. He was developing land all over the place. I'd been pulled into some of those conversations and projects. But but really what I kind of honed in on was was building the luxury custom business. And um, Ryan uh, you know, kind of, it was kind of his baby, but he, you're right. He'd kind of taken his eye off the ball a little bit. Wasn't that interested in it anymore. And, uh, so we agreed and I, I purchased, uh, the custom home business from him. And I just assumed that getting business was going to be as easy as Ryan made it look right. I think there's probably a lot of real estate agents in, that can relate to that of like, man, I'm going to take great care of people. Like I come out of hospitality, I come out of customer service. Like you give me a client, I'm going to be all over like serving that person. And then there's this rude awakening of like, oh crap, I actually have to get the clients in order for me to offer my world-class service, right? World-class service is nobody really good if you're not actually serving them, right? So, so I then at that point started to, to, to think, okay, wait a minute, I've got to find a way to get more clients in the door. I was actually coached by a very well-known uh, coaching business, like uh, coaching organization from the real estate industry who taught me notes, calls, and pop buys and, and, and put put people in a big sphere. And, you know, the challenge was, is that it was working, but it wasn't working very quickly. You know, I was managing the projects during the day, right? Like many real estate agents managing all their clients during the day. And then you've got, oh yeah, I've got to go get business. And the, and the methodology is build this big database. And from there, you're going to get between seven to 10% of the people who will use you or refer you in, it, in any given year. And those are like statistics, you know, across the country. Like that's what a typical sphere of influence database does. In other words, Jay, you're having conversations and adding value to 90 people who are going to do nothing for you in the given year, right? That's a lot of wasted conversations. 
And uh, that's what I was uncovering in my home building business. But I, I uncovered the fact that, that, okay, if it's really crowded here at this part of the stream, let's call it a stream, right? Where everyone's got their pole in the water and they're, and they're fishing, trying to get those, those new custom home clients, you know, in their company, working with them, right? That's, again, the situation that I was in. I happened to look upstream, hence the name of my book, The Upstream Model. I looked upstream and there was an architect and every one of his clients needed a builder next. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, why don't I just go spend time with him instead of like spending all this time with my sphere who can only help me a little bit. Why don't I just go find key referral partner or a key referral partner who could send me a lot of business. And I did that. And honestly, Jay, it seemed brilliant in my mind and I totally struck out. And like the reason being is because I showed up using the same tactics I'd learned. I showed up and said, here's some of my cards. Oh, by the way, I'm never too busy for your referral. Like these things so that, you know, that I'd been taught and the yeah. architect's like, okay, like I'll be friendly to you, but as quickly as I can get you out of my office, you just showed up as a solicitor and this isn't working for me. So I didn't get anything from that architect, but I thought, okay, I'm onto something here though, because that person can help me. So I'm going to take a different approach. So I developed kind of a five-step methodology to not only be welcomed in the door, but to be pre-edified, pre-sold when I walked in the door. Mm -hmm. So the architect was eager to sit down with me because of the person who had introduced me and what they had said about me, which by the way, I helped to craft, okay? Right, right. When I sat down in that meeting, it was not about me and here's my cards and here's all the initials behind my name and here's all my happy clients. It was me as a peer, not as a solicitor, as a peer, being able to truly like act as a business consultant to find out what's what are the challenges that this fellow business owner is facing and how might I add value to that, right? It was all about them. I was able to talk, talk, talk about them and get information rather get them to talk, talk, talk all about them. Right. From mm -hmm. there, I could step out, deliver value and kind of get their attention of like, look, this isn't your typical builder who's here with his hands out to see what plans can he bid on, right? But this is somebody that's going to help me take my architectural firm to another level, right? Yeah. And, and it, it wasn't magic. It was just a redirected effort, right? Then at that point, I found a way to integrate the value that I offered to my clients anyway, rather than offering it to them, I found a way to move that up to offer it to the architect's clients. So it was simply the same processes that I was already going through, right? I was just moving them up into the architect's client experience. So now every time he was interacting with his clients, he wanted me to be a part of that. He was like introducing me to the clients and my team to the clients before any other builder knew that those clients were going to be needing a builder, right? So I jumped way ahead, got upstream and got in yep. contact with that, with that client. So fast forward to now, those same principles apply in the real estate industry, right? Where everybody's competing out of the same waters. And it's, it's, if you've ever read the book, the blue ocean strategy, it's the mm -hmm. bloody waters. Everybody's yep. like lowering commissions. Everybody's like, trying to find ways to, to uncommoditize themselves when they put themselves on the shorelines of being commoditized, right? They've all got their right. in the same water. Yep. So what I teach is go find, instead of a hundred people that can refer you 10 deals in a given year, go find one person who can send you 10 deals in a year or one person that can send you a deal a week, right? They're out there. Some of the agents that I coach and work closely with, some of them develop these partnerships before and they're like, I just want more of them. And others are like, Okay, how do I have more of that? Because if I can manage one relationship or have my team manage one relationship, now all of a sudden I can have warm referrals coming in the door and I can reallocate those missed or lost 90 conversations back to my family or back to my clients and reinvest it back in the business as opposed to just having it be wasted, hoping that one day those people will do, you know, will, will kind of reciprocate. Love it. That's awesome, man. It reminds me of a story. You'll, you'll get a kick out of this. And so, so uh, I went to a, a Jay Abraham event. And so like I, I did the same thing. It sounds like you probably did. I paid everybody. Like, I, I mean, everybody that, that in the industry that would coach me, I, you know, gave them all my money and, and they all had a different spin, right. And a different, you know, yeah. you know, it's one, you know, one's, you know, you know, dirt prospecting only and the ones, you know, you know, buy referral only. And then it's, you know, you know, it's, you know, direct response marketing, like they all have their niches. Right. But nobody was teaching the full business. So I went outside the industry and, and hired Jay Abraham. And I went the very first event I went to um, with him, um, he, he broke down, you know, he did, he asked a bunch of questions about how many of you have ever received referral, everybody in the, every, and this is not real estate, this is mostly other industries. Yeah. And, uh, every, so everybody raised their hand. He's like, how many have two, how many have had 
three or how many or how many systems do you have for generating referrals in your business? And um, then he started asking that question and everybody was sat down, you know, after one or two systems in place, which is what he teaches the 93 referral system method or whatever. And uh, it's, it was just funny because I was I had been spending so much money on marketing that I um, really wasn't identifying who was sending me referrals. And the crazy thing that I figured out is I changed on my on my intake form for people that would call in uh, instead of asking what advertising may you saw seen last that may, made you decide to call, which they would always give me one or two things. Uh, we started asking, who do we need to thank for sending us your business? And we learned that almost everybody was coming highly recommended by somebody. Right. And so I wasn't tracking this in the database or anything. And we tracked it for an entire year, totally changed my business um, to being, I think it was more than 50% by almost 50%. I think it was 48% by referral um, that, that year. And we were getting referrals. I just wasn't tracking it and I wasn't focused yeah. on it. Right. And I certainly wasn't focused on it at the level that you're discussing it. And, um, but what I learned was there, there was this one relationship. It was my painter had referred me the most business of anybody all year long. I think we closed six deals and I had no idea he'd referred me anything. And so like, I, I wasn't investing more time, effort, energy yeah. in that relationship. I mean, this is a guy I drunk beer with on, you know, my remodels and stuff, but you know, he was a friend of mine, but, um, you know, I had no idea. He didn't tell me he was sending sending people to me or anything. And so, um, crazy, crazy. But yeah, you know, it's a huge idea of um, you know being intentional about that and, bu and building your business and finding those relationships. And I, I love what you said. I mean, you're literally uh, speaking my language. Is you know, find ways to add value um, mm -hmm. to their lives and and uh, make a difference. I'm curious, um, and I'm sure this is in the book, um, and maybe there's an offer for for somebody here that's listening, but. What what is the what was the process that you went through to help him with his business that allowed you to get allowed you to get you know that um, yeah you know, yeah so the first thing was I sat down in the meeting with Jared right now Jared I had been introduced to Jared uh, by Nicole Camp who was an interior designer and Nicole was a like a raving fan of mine so sure. I, I I was able to help craft the introduction right to where. Again, when we sat down in that meeting, I didn't have to talk about myself. Like it started kind of like he already knew me, which was perfect right. because then I could simply say, hey, Jared, tell me about your business. Like I'm familiar with you. I see your homes popping up all over the place. Well done, by the way. Tell me, um, where are you at now with regards to where, like, where do you want to be in the next couple of years? Right. And um, he began to kind of lay out this vision of where he was going. It was exciting. I was like, man, that's awesome. I can totally see you doing that. Tell me what, what, what are the couple of things you feel like need to be in place in order for you to get from where you are to where you want to be at? And um, he began to identify some weak spots, right? He, he said, you know, I'm like, I'm really good at kind of like word of mouth, but like my marketing, I realized, again, this was early 2000s, right? He said, I'm, I'm feeling more in need to have a, like a marketing and a web presence because sometimes people are, are, are hearing about me and then they want to go kind of see my work online. So I reached out to a friend of mine, a, a friend of mine whose name was Bruce. Bruce ran a website company. And I said, Bruce, I've got um, somebody who's, who's, this is what they do for a living. He's an architectural designer, um, got great work. Like, how do you feel about, building him kind of a, uh, a web presence and, uh, you know, something that he, like he can, he can be proud of. So, um, it was simply that introduction that caught Jared's attention, right? It was after the meeting, typically there's a meeting and there's sometimes there's a thanks for meeting, but, but rarely is there a phone call back saying, Hey Jared, I've been thinking about you yeah. and what you said. And it reminded me of a gentleman who I know I'm good friends with, and he has a company that does some of the stuff you talked about. Is it okay if I make that introduction? It wasn't like groundbreaking. It. Many of us are doing it anyway. But again, I did it within the context of, of what he actually needed, right? Like right. I was able to diagnose before I prescribed. Oftentimes, those of us in, in sales situations, we come in guns a blazing like, I'm going to give you this, this, and this, and this, and this. And, and we're not solving the right problem, right? right. We're, like we're not actually addressing anything that they care about. And so once we can kind of have the space because we've been pre-edified, to, to talk about them and extract that from them. Now we have like the perfect opportunity to go to work on that thing, right? So that was the first start. And then I went to Jared afterward. I said, Jared, here's something that I do for my clients. And I'm, I'm sure either you do or you'd love to do this, which is like a full job site walk. So before we actually start digging, we'll go out with the plans and we'll, we'll like walk through. Okay, here's where your kitchen is going to be at. Here's the view, right? Here's where now... Notice that in, in, in the summertime, you're going to get some sunlight coming through there, whereas in the wintertime, you're not, right? It just really kind of helped them see, this, de like developing two-dimensional plans and turning them into a three-dimensional experience is hard for a lot of people to relate, right? And you'd get into right. the project and they'd be like, I didn't realize this room was going to be this small. I didn't realize it was going to be this big, right? So to actually kind of help them see that was a great experience for the clients up front, kick the meeting off right, 
or the whole relationship off right. So I said, Jared, what if I were to do kind of a mini revised version of that ahead of time to where you can kind of have the opportunity to get some feedback and make any adaptations to the plans? He said, I've done that sporadically, but like as I've gotten busier, it's hard to always go do that and actually have those full conversations. And I said, look, I'm happy to do it, right? And, and it'll like no obligation. I'll just go serve your clients and I'll just be a representative of you out there, right? Now, as I started to do that, guess what? I'm getting early access to these clients. I'm building a relationship. They're asking now, now tell me what you do. I work very closely with Jared, right? Um, but I actually build homes here in the area, but he asked me to come out and do this. I wanted to walk you through this. So, so now I'm adding value to Jared, but I, yeah. again, the key is I'm getting early access to the clients. Yeah. That's beautiful. Love it. Man, that's brilliant. Great stuff, man. So, so how is that, how does that progress, you know, into, into real estate and what you're doing now? Yeah, no, I love it. So a couple of things. So I've realized again, as I mentioned that there's, um, what big tech platforms are doing and oftentimes what agents are doing themselves is they're showing up very much as a commodity, right? Mm. Think about like the Redfin model, right? Like, oh, really? gosh, yeah, like, terrible. Brilliant, like brilliant model if you're Redfin, um, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. if you're not, it's not a great model for agents, right? No. Which is their not overall the message right? to the consumer is, hey, we've got great technology. And by the way, all agents are created equal. We'll give you agent A, B, C, D, or Z. It's just a matter of how fast they can show up, right? There's no differentiation of the person. It's like right. single robot, right? Right. Like they never talk about their agents because they that's not their value proposition. And so right. there's this general push in the industry to say agents are all pretty much the same and come here to us. We're your master and we'll tell you where to go, right? Right. Which for an agent, that's not good for their margin. That's not good for mm. really the value to differentiate themselves. And so- yep. Part of what, what my model teaches is a couple of things. Number one, rather than having to go out and build your own database, right? A hundred people at a time to get 10 more deals. That's exhausting, right? Mm -hmm. Number one, but it allows you to say, okay, there are other professionals in the marketplace right now who are having conversations with their clients. And if I were to add value to that professional, it will allow them to not only not be commoditized in their industry, but it's going to allow my value to show up in the middle of their conversation and such a natural warm referral back, right? So I've identified kind of key referral partners, key industries that work really well with real estate agents. Mm -hmm. And every day, Jay, I'm surprised by the stories that come back to say like, hey, I just created an upstream partner out of a, like you, a painter, right? Hey, I just created an upstream partner out of a right. moving right. company. I said an agent last week, contact me. She said, Justin, I've, like, I've got your book. I like, I love the concept. She said, I got three listings last month from a moving company. I'm like, a moving company? I would have never thought, right? They seem to be, right. like they'd be downstream. And and, right. and and here's the key. The way that most agents go about it, they would remain downstream, mm -hmm. right? But there are certain professionals out there that have a, consultative relationship with their client, regardless if they're white collar, blue collar, it doesn't matter. They have a right. consultative relationship. They have influence and they can ask the right questions that expose what these clients need in addition to a mover, in addition to paint on the wall right. and then cover the fact that they're going to need them next. And part of their value proposition becomes not just the, the consultative component, which is big and decommoditizes them, but it also allows them to now bring in other professionals, AKA the real estate agent, into the equation to get there early and build a relationship of trust so that you're not, again, having to go build one at a time, these relationships of trust. You're simply right. adopting the entire database, if you will, of somebody else who's already built that, right? Because they're right. it up to you. So Right. Love it. That's great stuff, man. I love it. Love it. Love it. So, so let's talk, let's talk a little bit about, you know, you, you made, you made the transition over to eXp Realty. How did that come about? When, when did you make that decision to, to do that? And what's kind of the plan that you have for, you know, for moving forward, being one of our partners at EXP. Yeah, I appreciate it. So about four years ago, right? Um, I was hired as uh, kind of an early hire within a, a big title company. Okay, so after the home building industry did what it did, I realized that my passion was not developing land, it was developing people. Hmm. It's not building homes, it was building businesses. So I sought out a career that allowed me to do that. Um, I, I was recruited into what I felt would be a pretty temporary opportunity, but it was the opportunity to launch a Fortune 500 title company into a new market. And I thought I can come in and, and kind of have business level conversations with real estate agents and attract bigger clients. That worked. I ended up staying for seven and a half years. In the process of being there, 
I realized that I could only grow so far, right? My passion was really to help agents more than I was allowed to in that industry. And I started a podcast about almost four years ago called the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. And that really became a really interesting platform for me to, to number one, be around people like you that are big thinkers, right? That are always doing right. crazy cool things. And I just couldn't be contained in that world anymore, right? I, I, I had to expand beyond it. But I started to catch a vision of like, okay, if I were to really be of benefit to an agent, what would that look like? Like, how could I really impact their, their not just their business, but their life? And, and I'll, mm. I'll, I'll kind of interject in here what to me think bigger means. Sometimes people means like think, think bigger real estate means like, just building a, a big business empire, right? Mm-hmm. So me think bigger means it's 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 threefold, which is to help people to live, give, and serve abundantly. Mm-hmm. And I think when you kind of get your head around that, okay, that's what think bigger means. It even means to think bigger than real estate, right? This is right. that's a vehicle to help us get the lives that we want so we can impact the world in the way that we want, right? That's what it's all about. So I thought, okay, what if I were to, to like build a, a platform, right? And which Agents could come in and, and build. And I, I thought about how do I how do I attract the right people that are either employees, but they're all self-employed anyway. What does that look like? Is there some way for me to attract great talent? Do I hire them? Do I partner with them and give them ownership in the company? And then a good friend of mine, um, Jesse Dow, you know Jesse? Yep. Just been watching him for the past couple of years. He and I were good friends. I saw him get into the industry, and then all of a sudden just explode. And obviously he gets gives massive credit to the platform in which he's built, which is EXP. I just watch him, watch him. And I, I had this, this interesting experience where, um, and, and I'm really not a money motivated guy, but I was, I was very grateful for the situation that, that um, I had been able to enter into as a result of the big book of business that I'd built in the title industry, one of the largest in the country. And um, you know, to me, that was like, it was, it was good, comfortable money, but I knew it wasn't where I wanted to be. Jesse sat me down with somebody and I said, okay, look, I'm just going to be honest. Like now he was an EXP guy, right? Yep. And, and, and honestly, I didn't have intentions on moving in that direction, but I said, can I just shoot straight with you here? Like, let's just kind of cut to the chase. What is this platform done for you? Like from an income standpoint, let's talk. And the number that I was pretty proud of annually, right? Multiple six figures. He said, he, he opened up his, his world and he said, well, this is what I made passively last month. And it was, it was surpassed what I was pretty proud of on an annual basis. <laughs> and I thought for, for having my, my, my mind be <laughs> like my, like totally like my, my yeah, my, my mantra is think bigger. And all of a sudden my mind just blew up. Right. And yeah. Thought, okay. That's interesting because again, all of that fuels my ability to live, give and serve. And then all of a sudden the pieces started to come together. I thought, wait a minute, yeah. this allows me to actually not have to give, cause people to give up their own brand. This allows me to go out and, 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 and have conversations with the brightest people out there and say, we should partner. I'm building a platform. It's a think bigger real estate platform. You can build your own and you can, or you can lock into mine. Right. 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 And by the way, some of the brightest minds in the real estate industry are also our partners. Right. And also right. it's like, <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. This is, this almost, um, this is very different than I first kind of had been exposed to within this model. So um, for me, really it's, I'm, I'm building out right now a coaching slash consulting offering, in which I help people over a 90 day sprint to install the upstream model in their business so that they can build a scalable referral business. I help them go out, identify who are the right upstream partners for them. I help them to have the conversations. I help them to turn that into somebody who's referring them all the time, right? One relationship, giving lots of referrals. So it's, again, it's, it's not like an ongoing coaching program necessarily. It's a, it's a, it's a 90 day sprint and we're going to install this in your business. Um, and so that's my focus right now, but also on the back end, I'm building out these other components that allow agents who, by the way, are underserved in their brokerage. I've been seeing it for seven and a half years in the title mm-hmm. industry that they're there because, oh, the people are nice or we sure like the office meetings. By the way, office meetings are kind of dead now. And, and I'm seeing all these people who, who are kind of floundering a little bit, right? And we're coming into a changing market. They're not getting great leadership. And it's like, I can help these people, right? This isn't about me. This isn't about me. This is about people who need to be led, who are in an environment where they're they're not being led, right? Mm-hmm. And they're even if they were being led, the traditional path that they're going down, right? Using traditional models, like I described before, and traditional brokerage models are gonna leave them either having good income, but bankrupt on time, being able to fund their kids college with no relationship with the kids. Like all that bothers me. Right. And, yep. building, and building somebody else's empire. Yeah. 
instead of actually building their own, right? So yeah. if I can partner and help them building their own, then I'm all in, right? Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, it's a it's incredible. Um, you know, this this model attracts people like you because because it allows it, it's it's just a vehicle. It's a platform for us to do what we've already been trying to do and do it bigger and have an impact on more people's lives and and do it without having to monetize it, right? And right. and um, and that's you know that's uh, it's a beautiful thing. And not not to, and I don't think there's anything wrong with monetizing it. By the way, um, you know, I've always um, felt like the you know, when people make an investment, you know, they pay they pay closer attention. But um, but yeah, it's just it, it's um, it's it's the most fun I've had. So I've been here four years, and it's it's really been it's been a heck of a ride. It's certainly been great financially, but the the people like you that I get to meet on a, on a regular basis, right? Like there's so many quality people out there that just don't understand this opportunity. They don't understand what they could be what they could be missing out on. And um, so, man, it's it's a pleasure to hear you hear you share your story and um, and help you with um, you know making an impact in people's lives. Uh, is there a, is there a link or something if somebody wanted to go get your book where they should go or where, if they wanted to be get in touch with you or, or have a conversation where would they need yeah. to go yeah you bet so i think probably a great way to kind of be in conversation you can find me on facebook um and i have a actually a group there called successful real estate agents and uh the the, the whole premise behind the group is uh helping agents have successful businesses and significant lives as i mm -hmm. mentioned think bigger to me is more than just creating success there's there's hundreds of pathways to success but I feel, and it's well marked, right? right? The pathway to success and significance is, isn't as well marked. And so in right. that group, I pour a lot of value into helping agents to find models and time and systems that allow them to, to create the space to also create significance. So that's that's one yeah. great way is to get a lot of value. You can also get access to my book. If you go to just my name, Justin Stoddart, there's a T at the end, not a DPS, justinstoddart.com forward slash book. And I offer it there for what it costs me to, 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 print ship it. So, um, it's, it's like eight bucks to get your hands on. The book. Um, yeah. So anyway, and, and if you would prefer audible, it's on there as well. Like if, if you're not a reader and you prefer to listen, you can find an audible, just search the upstream model and uh, you'll find access to the book there. So love it, man. This has been a great, great interview. It's been great to meet you and get to know you a little bit uh -huh. here. I'm looking forward to, to getting to know you better and uh, collaborating on, on building that, building that empire and making a difference in people's lives. So uh, thanks for coming on here today on the One Big Fire podcast, and uh, we'll be back in touch soon. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Take care.